Doc Talk is brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals. Hey folks, welcome to Doc Talk. We're sure glad you joined us. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson from Kansas State University, and today my guest is Dr. Casey Olson, who is the Lewis Endowed Chair in Range Livestock Nutrition. We're going to talk about the buzzword and the term that's going around, fetal programming. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us, and enjoy the show. As dependable as the sunrise, in dairy parlors, open pastures, on ranches and feed yards across America, a place where reputation is more than a name, where the science of healthier animals is a way of life. It's the responsibility that drives who we are and what we do, every decision, every day. It's your livelihood and our responsibility. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. Brought to you by the new hired hand portable cow sprayer. For more information, visit cowsprayer.com. Folks, this is Dr. Casey Olson. We're tickled to death to have him come across the street from Animal Sciences <laughs> and uh, spend some time with us today. Dr. Olson is the Lewis Endowed Chair of Range Livestock Nutrition here at Kansas State University, and he does a lot of work around the state, around the country, and around the world on, on range cattle nutrition. And today I you know, fetal programming, we hear about it, it's in all the magazines, it's on... Just about every one you pick up. Every one, except for my church bulletin. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, I, you know, it might be there this Sunday. But what, what exactly is fetal programming? Well, fetal programming is the idea that if we nourish a pregnant female in a particular way, that there will be unexpected benefits in performance of her eventual progeny. Okay. So, so in other words manipulating the growth rate of the the calf in utero things that we do at, at that, that point up. that's definitely part of it okay um, you know we wouldn't want to overstimulate growth in utero obviously uh, and and feed ourselves into a dystocia problem that's not necessarily possible but the idea is that if we optimize nutrient flow across the placenta uh, to that uh, to that conceptus that eventually there will be benefits that pay out to that calf uh, during calfhood and also during uh, finishing in the case of a terminal animal or uh, lifetime productivity if that would happen to be a heifer. Okay well you know and 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 we've talked a little bit you know off camera and and during different meetings you know when when it comes out to the when we look at the NRC or we look at our, our nutrient requirements of cattle in the first, second, and third trimester, is there a point in time that people are more targeting or less targeting as far as the, the fetal programming as far as those three trimesters or, or are they all pretty much equivalents? To me, what seems to be the most critical in the literature would be the, the first third of pregnancy and the last third of pregnancy. Okay. Um, now. This term is new, fetal programming as a term is new, it's kind of a buzzword. Um, but it's not a new idea. Okay, we've recognized for, for decades that if we treat that, that pregnant mother right, that we're giving the calf advantages uh, that in some cases you know, we wouldn't normally predict. You know, I, I say it's a buzzword. Uh, you know, how many of you out in the audience heard the word proactive a decade ago? Right. Okay, proactive is another buzzword. I'm not sure if anybody can really define it. Um, but it became part of popular culture, and that's what's happened with the term fetal programming. Yeah, so when I look at it, you know, fetal programming is another description of supplying proper nutrition at the, at the point in times while the, the dam is pregnant. Yes. 
And you know, let's let's be honest. What we know about this thing that we call fetal programming is is actually very modest at this point. It's based on a, a series of studies that came out of the University of Nebraska several years ago. And very simply, uh, dams in late pregnancy were fed to where body condition was adequate. One group received an energy-based supplement. Another group received a protein-based supplement. Now. The, the progeny of those dams that were protein supplemented, they weaned a little bit heavier. They did a little bit better in the feed yard and they did a little bit better on the rail. Okay, the, the increase in performance was small but it was measurable and it was significant. Uh, and that's really what we know. I mean that, that study was the modern birth of what we call fetal programming. Okay, we know let it. Me, <laughs> let me uh, cut you off there because we got to go to a commercial. Sure. But when we come back, let's pick up on that and let's, let's discuss a little bit more about how this evolved into what we now call fetal program. Suits me. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Tyson Beyer, a student at the University of Saskatchewan, recently received an Amstut scholarship. As a fourth generation rancher raised on a cow-calf operation, Tyson grew up in the cattle business and it was natural for him to pursue an education in bovine medicine. After graduation, he plans to work in a large animal practice, then move into bovine reproductive technologies. Some call it a come from behind victory, an unlikely win, a reversal of fortune, snatching victory from the jaws of defeat. This is our moment, our victory dance, because we choose confidence. We choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Ask your veterinarian to prescribe Zuprivo. Zuprivo is a fast acting, long lasting BRD treatment that you can count on to get the job done. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo from Merck Animal Health. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. Hi, I'm Kevin Oxner, host of NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen and Colorado Rancher. Join me each week as the National Cattlemen's Beef Association brings you the latest updates in industry information and market news. Plus, each week we provide important educational information and features on cattlemen from across the country just like you. And we can't forget our favorite cowboy poet, Paxter Black. Join me for NCBA's Cattlemen to Cattlemen, debuting Tuesday nights at 8.30 Eastern right here on RFD TV. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Norbrook Laboratories, manufacturers of Enriflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine and swine respiratory disease. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson. Here's my friend and colleague, Dr. Casey Olson, who is the Lewis Endowed Chair of Range Livestock Nutrition here at Kansas State University. And Casey, we're, we're getting into a good discussion on the, the Nebraska study. So it showed that different levels of, of feeding to the dam, the offspring wound up having better performance, better carcass qualities, things, things to that nature. Yeah, and it was, it was less about level of nutrition than it was about the identity, the, the nutrient identity of what was in that supplement. 
One supplement was energy-based, one supplement was protein-based. Both sets of dams had adequate body condition, but the results were different. Uh, the, the dams that had a little bit of an advantage on the protein side uh, had calves that were healthier and that grew more. So when we start to think about this, that, and, and I'm assuming the ones that were had the protein supplement were not in a negative energy balance, they were also you know, had had a, an energy supply that was adequate to get them through the the yes. gestation and and the winter. So yes. it really gets back to the fetal programming is really more about proper and adequate protein supplementation. Yes, I mean the 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 phrase the buzzword suggests that you know the calf has a computer chip and we can program it somehow. <laughs> that doesn't work. Um, but they're. There is obviously an advantage, a performance advantage, for the, the protein supplemented dam's progeny relative to the energy supplemented dam's progeny. Now, in the Nebraska study, both groups of cows had adequate body condition. There was, to my recollection, no advantage uh, one way or the other. Uh, protein in particular, though, seems to do something special for the fetus. Okay, and we had to give it a name. Fetal programming was that name. Um, you know, since the advent of those studies, there's been uh, you know a tremendous amount of, of of monetary resources, human resources, put to the question of what is fetal fetal programming and how can we influence by maternal nutrition performance of that offspring. Um, I'm not sure where that is going to get us. Okay, so so when I start to think about about protein and and some of the products we have out there, you know, there's a lot of people using distillers. There's people using um, byproducts using um, urea, tub-based, um, lick blocks, different things of that nature. D is there anything out there that, that says there's one protein source better than another or one that, that a person, you know, that, that we're looking at on, on in terms of, of the fetus? Well, in my judgment, no. Okay, protein is protein where, you know, this notion of fetal programming is concerned. Um, I mean, what it looks like to me, if you look at the, the 30,000 foot picture, is just flat good management. Okay, we've known for decades that protein nutrition and late pregnancy was critical. Right. Well, let's take a break. When we come back, let's jump back into some of this uh, late term pregnancy and, and, and gestational nutrition. Uh, something I know you are passionate about, something that a lot of our viewers are passionate about. When we come back, more with Dr. Casey Olson. You're watching Doc Talk. We'll be back in a minute. I will take action against herbicide resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand. And I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. Hello friends, I'm Ernie Rodina. And I'm Don Dawson with the Better Horses Radio Show. For over nine years, we've been bringing the Better Horses Radio Show to markets all across the Midwest. We talk about God, lots about horses. We talk about cows, we talk about horse health, we talk to top trainers, and we even talk about Roy Rogers. We're having a blast with Better Horses Radio Show and would love to take it to a market near you. So visit our website at betterhorsesradio.com and let us or your local radio station know you'd like to hear it in your area. The Better Horses Radio Show is unbelievable. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. True Test Group, weighing systems, electronic identification, EID, electric fencing, and dairy automation systems help farmers and ranchers around the world manage the performance of their livestock for ultimate profitability. Folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Casey Olson. 
We're here at Kansas State University where Dr. Olson serves as the Lewis Endowed Chair of Range Livestock Nutrition. And, and you know, when we left for break, you said something that kind of caught my, my attention and, and I think probably a lot of people on the show, but fetal programming is, is nothing more than the best management of our pregnant cows or, or best management practices. I may be a little biased, but I believe that that's true. Um, I think one of my closing comments in the last segment was that we have known that protein nutrition of the, of the dam and late pregnancy in particular was critical. It's critical for success of the dam, critical for success of the offspring. Now we have many options for, for supplement choices for cows going into the winter months, that period of, of poor quality forage. Regardless of the, the means that we choose to deliver that protein, we get you know, immediate benefits to the dam. Okay, in, in one respect, when protein nutrition is adequate, intake of that low quality forage increases. Okay, in some circumstances, it can very nearly double. Uh, in the second circumstance, protein will actually increase energy availability from that low quality right. forage. It's not uncommon to see a 50% a increase in digestibility of uh, low quality forages when an adequate amount of protein is supplied. Okay, that, that research was done here largely at Kansas State in the 18, or sorry, the 1980s and 1990s. Uh, it's a, it's a well-known and, and widely practiced um, management option here in Kansas. What we were unaware of at the time is that, uh, you know, there may be some additional benefits of, of maternal protein supplementation that then pay out uh, to the calf later in life. This was something that, uh, um, our colleagues at the University of Nebraska pointed out and that uh, you know the uh, animal husbandry community has just kind of gone after whole hog. They've latched on to the term fetal programming. Everybody wants to do it. Here's the issue. I don't think it changes fundamentally uh, the, the best management practices that, that we've been using for the last quarter century. Yeah, in, in other words it may be uh, fetal deprogramming <laughs> It has been more of an issue of people trying to skimp yes. here or cut a corner management wise on getting protein out to to the cows and and what we're really finding out is that hey you know if you if you do what you're supposed to do these cattle turn out pretty good that's right um, I mean the, the thing to keep in mind is that you know there is no computer chip in that calf or that dam there is no programming that uh, that occurs as we know it. Um, what happens though is that the, the manager develops a, an eye to evaluate cow condition or, or maybe keeps records that involve cow body condition. That's still the best indication that that cow is in a, a, a nutritional status adequate to bring that calf into the world and, and allow it to suckle. Cool. Well we're going to take a break. When we come back more with Dr. Olson and we'll wrap up kind of our take on fetal programming, fetal deprogramming, <laughs> proper management of those cows to get a good calf on the ground and good growth rates of that calf while it's on your ranch. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. We'll be back right after these messages. Hi there folks, Dr. Dan from Doc Talk. Are you BQA certified? If you work with beef cattle and you're not, you should be BQA certified. So if you work with beef cattle on day to day as a beef producer, whether it's cow, calf, stalker, or feedlot, whether you're working in an auction market, whether you're 4-H, FFA, or ancillary to the beef industry, it's something that you need to do and it's something that you need to be familiar with. Beef Quality Assurance has been around for over 25 years and it has been the cornerstone for education for producers about things such as antimicrobial residue avoidance, food safety, animal welfare, sustainability, castration, dehorning, and many different things. And today, this educational opportunity is not only available face-to-face -face through your state coordinator, but it can also be attained online through Beef Quality Assurance online training provided by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica. If you go to the website bivi-bqa.com, you can be registered and certified in Beef Quality Assurance at no cost between now and April 15th. Also, if you register and become certified between now and April 15th, you'll also be entered into a drawing to win a Yeti cooler and a barbecue package valued at $500.
It's a great program. It's something that's been around for over three decades. It is the cornerstone to safe, wholesome, affordable beef. It's Beef Quality Assurance. Get certified today. It must be a, uh, an inherited trait because I have never wanted to do anything other than be in the cattle business. And it's interesting as I have grandchildren now, little bitty ones, all they want to do is go to the barn, swing a rope, and be a cowboy. It's, it's something, it's a, it's a lifestyle that we have, the way we make a living, obviously. But it's really more than that. It gives us the opportunity as a family to be able to work together and enjoy each other's company and make a living at the same time. We've been using Triangle for years, and the reason we do it's been safe and effective, and we're going to continue to do that. We'll put the cows in the chute twice a year, spring and fall. 100% of our cattle get vaccinated with Triangle. Working your cattle just got easier. Introducing the new Vet Gun Delivery System, a new way to apply topical insecticides to your cattle. The Vet Gun lets you remotely treat cattle with effective parasite control, so you can do it from an ATV, on horseback, or just walking among the herd. It's that simple. The proven topical insecticide AML Vet Cap is used with the Vet Gun. It works fast to control horn flies and lice while minimizing stress on your cattle. Fast, easy, effective. Vet Gun. Check with your animal health supplier for availability. Beef producers asked for it, and Norbrook delivers. Introducing new Enroflox 100, the newest addition to your arsenal for treating bovine respiratory disease. Enroflox 100 is an FDA-approved, ready-to-use injectable antimicrobial solution to treat BRD associated with Mannheimia hemolytica, Pastorella multocida, and Histophilus somni in beef and non-lactating dairy cattle. Administered SQ as a multiple-day therapy. Consult with your veterinarian today about Enroflox 100, the new choice. This segment is brought to you by the Beef Quality Assurance Program and the Kansas Beef Council. Improving animal care and beef safety for more than 20 years. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Casey Olson. And it's always a pleasure to have Dr. Olson on here because when we start to think about beef cattle production and, and, and profitability, I don't think you can start looking much besides buying the animal and feeding the animal. Those are the two biggies, at least in the, the feed yard and on the ranch side. But Dr. Olson is the Lewis Endowed Chair of Range Livestock Nutrition and, and Give us kind of the, the summary. We need to hear it every year, but going into sure. going into that, that last third of gestation, what are we looking for? Okay, managers, you can have fetal programming, and you're going to get it by conforming to what you already know is best management practice. Okay, um, a majority of fetal growth, maybe as much as 60%, is going to occur during the last 60 days of gestation. Okay, when you're managing that pregnant female, you have got to... You gotta allow your diet to change its character, either in amount that you offer or in the nutrient density of that diet. Okay, you've gotta support the cow, you've gotta support that rapid logarithmic field growth, yep. last 60 days of pregnancy. Because if that dam calves in adequate body condition, she'll be able to bring that baby into the world, she'll be able to support herself through peak lactation, and she'll be most capable of um, rebreeding 90 days later, okay, 90 days after calving, uh, you're helping her be all she can be from a genetic standpoint, just with that short-term nutritional support. And protein supplementation should be a part of it. Yep, and I, and I think that's the, the key, is that, is that understanding that even though we put, you know, we, we reinvent the wheel constantly throughout. <laughs> yes, we do nutrition, veterinary medicine, you know, it's a lot of times I say it's, it's, you know, it's different people and different cattle going through the same problems. <laughs> and, um, Cynical, but true. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's, that's me. But, but, uh, you know, rebreeding, body condition score, do you have any rule of thumb where you want those cows at at, at the, the time of, of calving? Okay, if a mature cow can be a condition five on a one to nine scale, that's, that's where I need her. Uh, I'd like to give heifers and second calf, well, first calf heifers, second calf heifers a little bit more of an advantage. If I can allow them to calve in a BCS of six, I like to do it that way. Cool. Well, I think that, uh, you know, good nutrition, good management, 
being a good producer and animal husbandry all ties in. It does. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for spending time with us. Thank you. Folks, Dr. Casey Olson here at, at Kansas State's Department of Animal Science and Industries. He is the Lewis Endowed Chair of Range Livestock Nutrition. I want to say thank you very much for joining us today. It's been a great show. It's been a lot of fun to spend time with Dr. Olson. Be sure to work with your local veterinarian, work with your local nutritionist. If you want to know more about what we do here at Kansas State University, you can find us on the web at www.vet.ksu.edu. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. I appreciate you joining us here on the show. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed caption brought to you by AgriLabs, the perfect pairing of performance and value. For more information about this program or previous programs, go to DocTalkTV.com. Doc Talk was brought to you by Merck Animal Health, the science of healthier animals.